The following podcast on the Your Own Pay Podcast Network will contain adult content. Listener discretion is advised. More information about this episode can be found at yourownpay.com. Thank you. Arigato. The Your Own Pay Podcast Network. Inspiring, motivating, and educating entrepreneurs around the world. It's Demasi and Michael, just talking tech. Yourownpay.com slash DM44. Uh, something cool today that I discovered in Todoist on Android. So I've been playing with sections more in projects. If you have you experiment, yeah, you've experimented them because um, BE one hundred one. Yeah, that, that's the thing I love because it kept me from having to create a whole bunch of sub projects. And then you can collapse those sections if yeah. you don't want to see those tasks without having to switch views. So what I discovered today is when I created DM forty four, I created like all the tasks, pretty much the same things that I have for four D three, and then I'm like, well, why don't I use a sub project so I can just collapse it and not have to see all this stuff too so i went and deleted all of them and then i added uh, a new one called dm44 a new section called dm44 and i forgot to delete the record dm44 so at the restaurant and that's what took me a little bit longer as mallory and i decided to go out for breakfast uh i i double tap and held on one of the tasks and i just slid my finger down after i felt that brief vibration underneath the dm44 and it drug it and drop it under there and it was super nice yeah, that works on iOS. The only thing it doesn't do on iOS, uh, and I don't, I haven't tried it on Android yet, so you can tell me if it did. It doesn't give me any feedback as to where I'm at before I drop it. No, so it does not. It's just a guess. Like, ah, yes, it should be in the right spot. Yes, yes. But I was surprised to see how how seamless it worked to be able to drag and drop on a mobile device, and like sighted users have been able to quickly do that for. Maybe it's been a little while. Has it been? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's, yeah, because uh, on, on Android, I think they've had the capability for a while. On iOS, it's somewhat recent, like in the past couple of years. Probably mm-hmm. iOS 11, I'm thinking, maybe. It was the little things that made me happy. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the funny thing is, and I should report this as a as a bug, because I can consistently make my device, uh, make to is on iOS crash. One thing, they have the, you know, they have the rotor actions on iOS, so they have a drag that shows up as an option but if you mm-hmm. double tap that and then you try to go drop it you don't get the drop action to ever show up all you get is whatever the actions are for the thing that you're currently highlighting so let's say i want to drop it onto a new section the only options i get are the options that would be available for that section so like collapse more edit and then yeah. i get a cancel drag which will allow me to get out of the drag and drop mode uh and nothing else i do will uh, allow me to drop that item that I'm dragging. So I have to do the double tap and hold and then slide down and hope I get it into the right spot. <laughs> but you get it to work, so. Yeah, and you do get a little bit of vibration feedback as you're moving past, at least on iOS you do. Uh, you get a little bit of vibration feedback as you're moving past things. So you can kind of do a little bit of counting. And if you go too far, things are out of order, you can kind of drag back up and, and get mm-hmm. it in there. So it does work. But the consistent crash I can create is if I try to collapse a task it works fine with a section but let's say uh you got a task and you created some subtask up under if i want to collapse that task it crashes every single time yeah you should you should probably report that are you part of the ios beta i am back on the beta to do now yeah yeah i'm back on the, on, oh. on the to do is beta now uh I mean, it's been in test flight. I just wasn't on it. And I had to switch back to regular to do this in order to do the in-out purchase because I didn't go purchase through the to do this website. I just did it right. because every time I type in to do dot com, it takes me to my account and there's my <laughs> task that I cannot access. So I can't get to the page. Yes. Screen there. I wish. So, Todoist, if you're listening to this episode, maybe we'll shoot it over your direction. Uh, I really wish I could complete tasks on desktop, but we've had that conversation before, and I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Wait, that sounds violent, but you know what I mean. So, I don't feel like is 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 you know uh, continuing a, a, a pointless topic because really, like Todoist is a is an excellent service overall in general. Like what it provides, the capabilities that are there, the functionality, the, the sharing is is enough to make me like it anyway. But the app itself on mobile is great, and the service uh, as as a service that platform is awesome because there are so many things that just connect directly into Todoist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, to extend it even further, you got things like Zapier and IFTTT and some other automation services. So it, it is an amazing platform. Things are possible there that are not possible uh, with other tools, with, with with other tools. Right. Like my 
favorite used to be favorite uh to do manager omnifocus uh like they haven't implemented sharing as far as i know but i haven't really been looking at it so i could be wrong about that but the web integrations the ability to you know let's say if mike adds a task this is something i'm going to set up at some point uh is let's say mike adds a project adds a task to uh, the website project and he labels it bug. Well, what I want that to do is automatically open up a new GitHub issue with Mike's task that he added with, with whatever mm-hmm. information he's put in so that when I'm looking through the repo as I'm doing things, I can create a branch and work on that, fix it and check it off or, you know, mark it as closed in GitHub. And when it's closed in GitHub, it gets marked as done. Complete and and to-do-ist. Yeah. Right. And that's something I cannot do with OmniFocus natively. Now, there may be some weird, crazy 200-step <laughs> shortcuts I could create to kind of sort of make that work, but it would still be somewhat of a manual process. But yeah, the desktop apps, man, look, some people like working on their computers. Not everybody is running around doing their business on their phone and their tablet to doist or doist, I think is the company name. Fix it, man. Look, get some new web technology. I don't care if it's a web app. Wrapped in an or, app. F- or fix your Windows 10 app or fix your Mac OS apps. Like, I, one or the other would definitely be useful, but give me access on the desktop too. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's I, I don't care if I have point. to go to the web or if I have to go to an app. Yeah, e- either way. To me, to, to, to me, honestly, I haven't looked at the Windows 10. Funny, I got a story about Windows 10 in a minute. But looking at the Mac app, like it looks very much like it's just the website wrapped in a downloadable package yeah. from the app store. Uh, you know, sort of like Slack, but whatever like it is, Slack. man, fix your stuff. Right, right. Yeah, I kind of so miss Slack, when, man. These messages. I'm using Slack getting... every day at work, and it's treating me pretty well. Man. I got bored one day, for those who didn't hear the story, I got bored one day, sent Heather, who's our production assistant and traffic assistant, uh, email, and I'm like, hey, join me over here. And so she's been pinging me on Slack and she made a comment yesterday. Uh, you know, you shouldn't have given me that Slack thing. Cause now I can just send you work directly. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm cool with that. I like to be able to chat in there. And now I could integrate to doist with Slack and get push notifications mm-hmm. on my work desktop. Slack is, uh, it's a pain sometimes, but it is nice. Like, and every time I end up, we end up in a super long group message thread, uh, with Desiree, I'm like, man, Slack is look kind of nice. Uh, <laughs> go back to Slack right now, man. This is driving me nuts. Windows 10. What's going on with that? So I'm going to have to. So me and you were discussing. I don't remember if it was DM43 or not, or, or if it was just a random phone conversation. But we were talking about uh, running VMware on the Mac. Uh, you were trying to figure out uh, audio routing. Uh, is, is, oh, is yeah, what, what yeah. was the point? Yeah, that's how we got into the conversation about the whole. That thing. was on a phone call. Yeah, because you tried out what is it? Uh, the tool on virtual Windows. audio cable. Yeah, and discovered it. You said, "Well, you said it was crap." I can't say it was crap because I've never used. It. I saw it when I was still on Windows, but I was like, "Man, I'm about to get off Windows. I don't think I even <laughs> waste my time." But yeah, I, we we discussed running Windows 10 inside of uh, VMware. Uh, machine on the Mac, and I was like, I don't know if that works. I mean, I know it works; you can do it, but like, I don't know what what the gotchas are with uh, screen readers and audio routing and all of that stuff. But I'm about to find out at some point uh, in the next month. I'm gonna have to install Windows 10 and start getting more familiar with it because I could potentially find myself teaching people's Windows 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a love hate relationship with Windows 10, like. I think my issue is I have multiple users using Windows 10, and so I get settings set the way that I expect them, and then one of the boys will come use the laptop or something, and they'll not even pay attention and be in my account or something because they both know my pin, and so then they'll go change some little thing that makes a big difference, and so we got this desktop from work, and it was uh, Windows 7 with 4 gigs of RAM. It's got a 40 gig hard drive, and so I'm going to work on it as a project to rebuild uh, or not rebuild but to improve it and make it the boys's and they get to help me with it we just ordered a vga cable off the internet because it does not have an hdmi video card so that might be something we'll upgrade too so but it's it's easily take a partable it's a dell computer so it'll be 
It'll be an adventure. Yeah, I got one of those. Well, it's an HP uh, Windows 7 desktop uh, sitting next to me up under the desk that I want to do something with at some point when I get some time. I thought about actually pouring, putting uh, Linux on it, uh, just running it as, like yeah. a, as a home server. Yeah, I just, thought about that, too. thought about that. I might do that uh, just to see how it goes. It says the specs for the particular one I have are not optimal for Windows 10, which is why I didn't just straight upgrade it because that would have been quicker uh, and simpler can you upgrade the internal like the innards of it innards uh i haven't opened it up to look but i'm thinking it's the <laughs> processor is the issue uh, but i haven't opened it up yet and look uh, but it is fairly simple to take the case uh, off take the case off yeah because uh, one yep. thing i know definitely if i do actually use it for anything uh in the house and not just leave it sitting here to slowly rot uh gotta put an ssd in it man i cannot deal with uh-huh. spinning this on computers anymore yeah we've been spoiled with that <laughs> just like fan noise i hate fucking fan noise <laughs> macbook let us know at your own pay.com slash dm44 what you hate about modern day computers <laughs> or older computers or any computers. Those who haven't heard, because I've been remiss in mentioning it, on the second Monday of every month, you can hear me live talking about Android, accessing Android segment on the Kelly Co. Show. And now I can say that I will be on at about 10 after 2 on, as I said, the second Monday of the month. Uh, and we're going to be talking about this this uh, month, which it comes out on the 9th, we'll be talking about my brief experiences with the pixel 4 <laughs> and we'll also be chatting about some uh, tips and tricks for configuring talkback for most efficient use so just wanted to throw that out there if anyone is interested i don't know when this episode will go live i, I don't have an answer for you on that but you can always subscribe to the kelly co podcast as well and get access to the content there uh, yeah i'll probably listen to that episode because i need some tips like that's the first thing i noticed with my pixel 4 that i have not had to relinquish as of yet although my daughter <laughs> did walk in here and see it laying on the desk and she's like whose phone is that and i said it's mine <laughs> You got to buy me one. I was like, um, you got an iPad. Get out of here. I thought she was going to try to commandeer it for a second. Uh, she hadn't seen yeah, the camera yeah. yet either. So that, that's another thing. She ain't seen the, uh, the actual view through the, through the camera yet. So yeah. uh, if she sees that, I like, have a problem. The first thing I noticed is like, there's a lot of settings as there are with, with Android. Uh, although mm-hmm. iOS settings are getting kind of out of control <laughs> at this point now. <laughs> it's gotten ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, look, they just just as a quick side note, they have stuffed so much stuff into accessibility, which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but they have st- there are so many configuration options in accessibility on iOS that they have actually moved it out of the general category and put it as as its own top level settings option. Which has pros and cons. It has pros and cons. The pros are it's easier for people to find it now because a lot of times people did not know how to get to those settings. Uh, Now it's right there. The cons is that there's a lot of stuff in there, man. So one piece of advice that I'll give you real quick for TalkBack is go spend some time in both the selector options of TalkBack and the gestures options of TalkBack. In the selector settings in TalkBack, you can pick and remove you can add or remove what options you want available in there mm-hmm. and then you can use a gesture because the pixel 4 does not have a fingerprint sensor so oh. it's best to use a gesture oh okay now i do know what you're talking about because i okay. did use that on the pixel 3 uh i yeah. had certain things said like i could swipe down on the fingerprint sensor to go through the options i had picked yep. and yeah okay okay and then you use up and a uh, flick up and flick down on the screen to cycle through those options yeah and then gestures one cool thing that I have is so if you swipe right and then left in one solid movement, it starts reading from the next item, uh, which is very handy, especially on a web page. And then if you swipe right and left, it'll activate the actions menu. So if you need to move an icon or you need to dismiss something, you can just highlight that either in the app switcher or on the apps drawer or wherever you need and then swipe left right and then you're in your actions menu so it saves you a couple of of, uh, taps or swipes and then the last modification that i've made is i didn't use this forever because i i couldn't wrap my brain around it but for some reason one day i finally got it i think and i'll explain to you how i think i got it is i enabled this or i disabled the show menu and list item in TalkBack. So now if you bring up a menu, for example, if you swipe up and right 
that'll get you to your local contacts menu. Mm-hmm. And instead of seeing it in a list, I can just slide my finger in a cir- circular motion to find the icon that I want. And what I did is I also enabled the lift to activate menu option in TalkBack. So if I find the cut option uh, while sliding my finger in a circle, which I know is typically at about 11 o'clock, then I just slide my finger up to cut and I lift my finger up and it cuts something out of there. Or I can paste uh, items quickly as well. So that's something to to, to play oh, around with too. Okay. okay, I remember talk back having that circular menu back in the day, and I was yep. wondering. I I assumed the change was made because either they got a lot of feedback from people, or they just decided that it was simpler for people to navigate a list instead of trying to go around a circle. Uh, but the circle used to be helpful for me for the exact reason that you just said, which is once you kind of spend a little time with it, you you could pretty much kind of target exactly where you were trying to go and then just tap, you know, double tap to, to get things activated. But I will go and tweak that right there because that will save me a lot of time too. And now you don't even have to double tap because if yeah. you set it up, so you lift to activate, that is what is super awesome. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta go check that out. I gotta definitely yeah. go check that out. So we'll talk more about that on the AMI Kelly Co show. Uh, tune in second Monday of the month. <laughs> Yeah, or just subscribe. We're going to put the link to it in the show notes at youronpay.com slash DM44, but we'll also drop the RSS link in yeah. there if you just want to tap that and go ahead and just subscribe to the show. Because, yeah, Mike's doing an Android show, just in case you weren't aware that he was doing an Android show on the radio. If you want more of me, because everyone wants more of Michael. Are you still doing that other show? Which uh, Anted show, the other Android show? Yeah. Yeah, uh, when I have time. They they record typically on Friday evenings, so sometimes I've been on the phone for an hour and a half at that point, and I'm like, I just I just don't want to go get on another call right now. I can't do it. <laughs> when I have time, I jump on there when I'm in the mood to. Man, back to Windows 10 for a second. There was an update, you know, the monthly update at the beginning of February. For some people... They're losing mm-hmm. data. There are two issues, and I, I don't actually off the top of my head remember enough about it, but I will put some links in the show notes for you to read up on it. One, the, the critical thing I want to say, if you have not been hit by this, kind of watch your updates uh, a mm-hmm. little bit. You know, just, don't just let them auto-install on you. Uh, always turn off auto-installing of updates anyway, especially system updates like that, because you, you-, you never know what's going to happen. So if someone knows how to, and that's something to be aware of with Windows 10, if someone knows how to completely disable updates, let me know. Because from my observation, you know, you cannot, you can delay them. You can delay them, but you cannot, unless you're on, unless you're in a corporate environment where your machine is run up under, uh, what is it called? You know, the Windows, Windows policy thing where where, where right right unless you're in that situation like any other just standalone windows machine is not being managed you can defer your updates yes you can so pay attention to those notifications in the (laughs) taskbar but i i would advise delaying just a bit uh but the essential issue there was well i don't know what the actual issue was the the result is that originally people were reporting that when they did the update uh, their their user data would disappear. So when they would log back in after rebooting or whatever, like it would appear as if they just had a brand new, you know, installation of Windows. None of their data was there. Mm-hmm. Now, initially, the first time I heard about this, I didn't, uh, I didn't run around calling people like I did the second time, uh, because what it turns out was happening for that set of people that were reporting early is their data wasn't actually gone. It's just that their profile, their user profile folders were renamed and apparently it's a part of the update process where they rename your folder and then they name it back so that everything works well they weren't going through that final step of actually renaming them back to what they're supposed to be so that when you logged in you saw your stuff so it was still there so it's like okay it sounds like it's a random thing it's not happening to everybody and it's not actually wiping out data so I don't say anything. If anybody calls and says like, oh, I got this problem or whatever like that, blah, blah, blah. But hey, go poke in these folders right here. See if you see something called zero, 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 zero dot your username or whatever. Uh, yeah. Delete your other stuff. Rename that. You know, I'll tell them how to do it. But it wasn't a major thing. You it sh- didn't seem. Go ahead. Right. I was just going to say you should be good for that for now, at least with my observations from the Windows 10 computers we've updated but maybe check with someone else who's updated recently. And Look, find do out from backups them. is the overall point. Just to sum it up, uh, the, the, the second thing is that some people 
did appear to apparently start to lose their data where it was actually getting erased. Uh, I don't know how prevalent that was. I don't know if it was hyperbole, although from what I heard, a lot of the people that are reporting that their data was actually deleted, uh, they were tech savvy people like they weren't. Uh, and when I say tech savvy, like they were in the business of knowing Microsoft OS is like they, they weren't even me level people they were like higher up than me like they, they they really get it they understand how windows works they could go in and edit the registry and not break stuff type of people but the, the point uh that i want to make is get a backup solution in place even if you're just back like if you're not yeah. doing the whole full bootable backup i think that's the thing you can still i think you can do that with windows i'm not certain but even if you're not doing that make sure you have a backup not dropbox <laughs> not a backup not not your cloud storage it's not a backup because if things go sideways and your computer deletes the files off your computer, they're probably going to get deleted out of the cloud, too. Because you know what? Your computer syncs to the cloud. No, it's not a backup. Get an external hard drive. Make sure, especially before you do a system upgrade. And I advise this to anybody. Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and whatever your platform you're using. Do a backup before you do a system update, most certainly. Uh, and make sure that all of your important documents are... Uh, of available just in case something goes wrong so that's the psa for this episode back up your stuff back your shit up and use unique passwords well yeah that's always the, the, the <laughs> use unique passwords there get a password man hey speaking of password yeah. matters that actually does bring up something i did want to discuss with you and i wasn't going to message you about it because i didn't think it was that important uh but since you brought up passwords and we're talking yeah. about password managers I like one password. I know there's some people who like LastPass. Some people, you know, I got a friend of mine that's actually switching off of one password to use the iCloud keychain. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope they plan to stay in Apple ecosystem for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Man, that is awesome. Look, I pointed that out to him uh, without pointing it out directly. Like I was like, well, look, I can't do that because I was like, huh, that's an interesting idea. I was like, eh, you know, I can't do that. I, I mean, obviously, I can't do it anyway. I was like, I was thinking about doing it for Tia. I'm like, eh, I can't do it for Tia either because Tia is going to end up using a Windows computer at some point and she's going to be screwed uh, because I've gotten her to <laughs> yep. the point that she doesn't know none of her passwords. Like she uses one password and if she screws around and forgets to put something in one password, we're doing a password reset. But I see, and this probably was here in Android last year when I was on the Pixel 3, using the Pixel 3. Uh, but I see that there's a built-in password manager because I had to pick which option I wanted to be my uh, password filler. And I had to choose one password and I saw the Google thing. So I want to know if you had used that at all. Nope. I picked one password right when I installed ah, <laughs> Man, you're no help. I was yeah, like, I yeah. should try it out, but I don't really got time to try it out. I, mean, well, I kind of know how keychain works. I might tinker with it, but I don't. I don't. Yeah, I, the thing that I have with one password that, like, I've got credit cards in one password. I got addresses in one password. Like, I suppose you probably could set all that up in the Google thing, but I don't know for sure, and it's just easier to use what I have. And the other thing is, is that now that my work computer is updated, I have one password on my work computer, so I can access some of my data that I need to from work too, which I don't know that I'd be able to do from Google. Maybe yeah, I can. I, I've never I was used say it. Like that, that's the reason I personally recommend to people if you're. You know, especially if you're in our situation, but that's the reason I, I can't leave one password simply is because there's one, there's too much stuff in there. And I know none of these other systems give me all of that capability. Keychain will fill your passwords and it will fill credit cards. Uh, the Google thing will do that because I know when I look through settings in Google Chrome is like you can add cards to save your cards in here to autofill when you're paying for stuff. But it doesn't do 2FA but natively, I don't think. 2FA is not natively there. Although I should point out before somebody, well, hey, send your feedback anyway if you got some feedback. But just so you don't yell at us and be like, hey, technically you really shouldn't. Yeah, I know. Really, you shouldn't put your second factor in right next to your actual password because then technically you don't have a second factor. It's one factor. But whatever. All right. Do what you choose to do.
Although I do have an app recommendation if you are uh, interested in a standalone 2FA app. Now I got to argue that point real quick, Demasi. Before you go on, y- your password can get dumped anywhere in a database. And if you still have your, t- like uh, someone's passwords could get, let's say, let's say, uh, I want to pick on a network, but I can't think of anyone right now. So let's say WordPress.com secured all your passwords in a non encrypted database, which oh, they don't. Horrible. So don't worry about that. But let's Girl, say they did. Think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, they don't. They, 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 they actually don't. Right. They, they would have been exposed right. a long time ago. I'm sorry. Go but ahead. then someone steals that database or hacks them and gets your password. If they don't have your 2FA code in one password and you're properly set up, then you're still protected with two factor authentication. So keep that in the back of your mind, too. Absolutely. Like, I'm not saying don't do it. I just want to point out that in theory, theoretically, what a lot of uh, more hardline security people say mm-hmm. is putting your two factor codes right next to where your passwords are, like in one password, uh, is not a good idea because technically at that point you don't really have a two factor situation because everything is all in one place. Yeah. I understand that argument. Uh, I, on the other hand, say that just like you, one password makes it a lot simpler for people. Uh, the average person does not want to, including me. And that average people mm-hmm. group does not like the fact that I am sitting at my computer. I hit the little keyboard shortcut command backslash to bring up one password, fill in my password for this site, sign in. The next screen says put in your 2FA code. And now I'm reaching for my phone to pick it up to look at a code that I try to type in within the 30 seconds before it expires. And I mess up a number. So I get it wrong the first time. And then the second time it expires halfway through me typing it in like that whole dance, right? Like it's a pain in the butt. So one password makes it a lot simpler. Uh, so I am willing to, because here's the thing that I tell people uh, that have said the statement to me that you shouldn't do that is look, if my password gets hacked on somebody else's dime, you know, I'm still protected because I got two factor on. If somebody manages to get into my one password account, I'm fucked anyway. It doesn't matter what they got. I'm done. <laughs> it's all over, man. Like it is yeah. over. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It is over because as you were saying, and the reason that we haven't, I haven't delved too deep. It didn't bother to try to go look at the Google password manager thing. And the reason I don't use keychain is because I have credit cards in one password. I have bank account information in one password. I have, social security numbers and what like I got everything in one password basically like anything that is of any sort of relevance that I need to be able to access the information and it is not something that I would want sitting in a unencrypted fashion it is in one password right down to documents I have kids I have pictures of everybody in my household social security cards are for the grown people their identification cards stored in one passwords as attachments just in case at some point what if i'm out 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 of the country somewhere or something i lose my id somebody steals my wallet i can get to one password get in and be able to at least pull up a picture to say hey this is me i am the person i'm telling you i am uh somebody just stole all my physical shit (laughs) so yeah uh i i I just wanted to point out the argument that people do make uh and i i do have some of my two-factor codes in other places other than one password but that's rare i used to uh (laughs) and the only reason i do it and to be honest like i i like i'm gonna tell you um, so i give you give you a tip I think everybody should consider doing this anyway, especially if you use one password, last pass, something like that. When you're setting up two factor, most times, if you can simulate a right click on the image that contains the QR code that you're scanning, you can save that image. I have I began doing that a couple of years ago. Uh, and I save the image and I will import that into a specific one password vault that is not a part of my all vaults view. So I have to specifically go switch to that vault so if i need to set up a new device for two factor for a service for whatever reason that could possibly be uh, i actually started doing this before one password had the two factor stuff in there but i've kept up the habit just in case i can always just go scan the scan the image from within one password and the two factor is set back up the other tip similar to that is if you can't get the image because sometimes it's, it's not an actual image that you can click on, at least with screen readers. Click the link that says can't scan this image and they'll give you a little text string. Go save that as a password and one password. And there you can just copy and paste that into a place somewhere at some point and you can get your two factor set up. And here's a third tip. Save your backup codes because I didn't. It, and that turned into a huge hassle. Yes, that is the third thing. Save those back. Those backup codes are important. Save them somewhere. Now, 
if you're not using one password, because I hear you people talking right now, I don't use one password. How can I make use of that information? I know I shouldn't put this in Dropbox. You really should not just put that that, <laughs> that, that QR code in Dropbox. I'm telling you, if you did not know that, don't do that. All right. Unless you've encrypted it first before you put it into Dropbox. Uh, don't do that. But a service that I have been using for about six months now, it feels like probably something like that. I think I first heard about it back in September is sync.com. I think I mentioned this in the episode, DM42 yep. probably, but sync.com. It is client side encrypted, which means when you put, it works just like Dropbox. So you have a folder on your computer that, that's there. If you're on your phone, there's an app. You add something to your sync.com folder or app if you're on mobile. And matter of fact, I need to put that on Android and see how it works, see if it's accessible. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. Well, you can use my referral link and it'll get you an extra gigabyte. I, I signed up with your referral link. I just haven't put it on the Android. I don't have anything in there. So I'm interested to hear what you're doing with that. Ah, so here's the thing. They encrypt every, everything is encrypted locally before it's uploaded to their servers. So it's very similar to the to the crazy madness that I used to have to do some years ago, which is using something like uh, PGP to encrypt a file or, or some other mechanism of encrypting a file before I would put it in the cloud storage because I did need access to it, but I just wouldn't finna put it in the cloud. So what I do with Sync is I have a folder inside of Sync where I store some of my recovery codes just in case there's another way for me to get to them. Like my recovery code for one password for it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't put the recovery codes for one password in one password. You'd be really screwed. Yes. But yeah, I, I save, I, I have a few things stored in there. Uh, actually, when I did my taxes this year, I also put uh, the documents that I needed to share with the lady that was doing my taxes. I put them in sync.com and just sent her a share link. Oh, nice. With an expiration. And was it easy for her to access? Because I assume she's not. Oh, she's yeah. not you, obviously. Yeah, yeah. No, she didn't have any problems. Uh, she's like, she went Sweet. ahead and clicked it and downloaded. The only, the only hiccup in the process, and it was mostly my fault because I did put an expiration on the link and didn't, I don't think I told her it was an expiration on the link, ah. is that she went back a second time to download something she didn't get the first time and it wouldn't let her in. I was like, oh, well, that was my bad. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it yeah. worked fine. It, it was awesome. Uh, so sync.com, they give you five gigs free which I believe is more than what Dropbox even gives you free. And I think Dropbox just gives you two now. Yeah, I think they've always given you two. Their their hook used to be you could share your link and get a whole bunch of extra data and yep. start capping people. Uh, and I got in on that train way too late by the time I got to Dropbox. <laughs> everybody I knew had Dropbox. I was like, man, uh-huh. there's people running around with 25 gigs of free Dropbox and like, I got seven. It's like, ah, oh, because I, I just ran out of people. But Sync functionally, just for anybody curious, Sync.com's uh, Mac application, I can't speak about Windows, but Mac and iOS, I can tell you about right now. I'll update you later on Android. Uh, functionally to me, it works just like Dropbox or Google Drive or iCloud Drive. Like I don't, there, there's no weirdness. Like you don't open it up and got to type in a password. Like once right. you're signed in and it downloads your stuff, like it's obviously unencrypted on your computer while you're using it or unencrypted on your phone while you're using it, which means put a password on your phone or your computer. Because otherwise the encryption does you not a bit of good, but it does encrypt things before they're uploaded to their server, which means they can't read your data. Uh, they also do some randomization of the file names within the encrypted blob. So they can't even look at the file name and know what's in the file. Nobody can even look at the metadata and say, oh, that's Demasi's recovery code for Cloudflare. Uh, we really need to break that. Like they can't even tell yes. that. Uh, so it's very, but functionally day to day use is just like another folder. The same way, the same claim to fame that made Dropbox such a huge monstrosity, such a juggernaut in the space of syncing documents uh, before they started to go all corporate on us. Uh, Sync.com has that same functionality. Uh, so it, it works just like you would want it to work. Like it's basically out of sight, out of mind, but they do have their shit together when it comes to encrypting. Dropbox stock is at nineteen dollars and thirty six cents. Oh, fifty six cents. Mm. Hmm. Is that up or down? Interesting. That's up twenty three cents. Hmm. Which, with the rest of the stock market, is kind of surprising. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're starting to gain more of a foothold in yeah. corporate than they used to have, though, because they've added so many features. Uh, oh man, they have changed their app around. Like every version looks like something new. I, it's not that extreme, but like last week, I went into Run and I typed Dropbox, and I'm like, I don't see that file Desiree put in there. Like she says, she put it in there, but I'm I'm. 
I don't see it anywhere. And those who don't know me, I, I really don't like using Dropbox. The only thing I primarily use Dropbox for is people who use Dropbox. I'm connected with a couple of them who use it. And then I keep backups of Nicholas's audio that I have a folder in every cloud service pretty much that has audio from Nicholas when he was younger. Uh, and so I was like, I, I don't see it in here. And then I went up to the start menu. I typed in Dropbox and it opened up like an actual Windows Explorer view of my Dropbox. And I was able to get to the files there and then it resynced and everything worked right. It's just little gotchas like that, that, that make me hesitate and put in everything in Dropbox. And then who knows what else is going on. So anyways, that's all I got about Dropbox. <laughs> I will spare everyone my rant about Dropbox. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Demasi, Android, you've been on it for almost 24 hours? Yep, a little bit over 24 hours. Uh, it's decent so far. It's decent. It's a good way to explain it. Like, I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I, I think at this point, because I haven't really gotten down to, like, customizing a whole lot of stuff, like, I'm still mostly stock with the exception of changing the uh, TTS to Eloquence. And Hold on up. to it while you can. <laughs> oh no what's going on oh you didn't hear you must not have got my message i said well it's a good thing you were able to download it because i didn't know you could still download it from the play store because some people even who has purchased it is not still seeing it in their library because eloquence is a 32-bit uh app code factory i think that's who makes it uh or nuance i forget which one it is i think yeah anyways the company that makes it has announced that they will not be porting it to 64-bit which means in future versions of android eloquence will not run unless someone else works some magic but i don't know how that works for licensing oh man uh so two things number one if somebody hacks the 32-bit binary to make a 64-bit and sticks it somewhere for an apk <laughs> <laughs> don't pick it up unless you actually know the person who did this and right. you know that they're trustworthy. Uh, and even then, I would be extremely leery about doing it uh, yeah. just because. No, I, I, I missed that message. I saw your message that said, oh, I'm glad you were able to still get it. And I was like, uh, okay. That's why I was like, thanks. Because I was like, I thought Mike was like, oh, I forgot I even let you into the family, dude. So, uh, yeah, yeah, good yeah. deal. You can still get that. I didn't know that you were still in the Google family. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, I was like, man, yeah, I appreciate it. Because I, I instantly went to go download that. And the funny thing is, like, so new thing, because Mike, you may or may not have seen this. Uh, I know you did. Actually, you probably did. Uh, so I signed in. Man, my gmail.com password is stupid long. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> but I had to type it in by hand in order to sign it to the phone. It was horrible. Oh, because you didn't have one password yeah, yet. Yeah, because I wasn't in yet. Like, I had to sign in with an account before I could even get to the Play Store to put the app on there. I'm like, man, yeah. you know what? G Suite next time. I'm going to set up a thing with G Suite where I just push this thing down to this phone and like, okay, look, just go and install the app. <laughs> Need to start it. This is horrible. <laughs> but I went into the Play Store because uh, obviously I had to go get one password. Like I couldn't do anything else beyond that uh, until I got one password. So I go into the Play Store and I got like this little recommended, like I tapped on my apps uh, and it had like this little recommended apps that you have in your library that you would probably want to install. And like third or fourth in that list was Eloquence. Uh, yeah, which I thought was nice. very strange because I was like, first of all, I didn't buy that. That's the, the, Mike shared it with me in the library, but I didn't buy it. Uh, second, <laughs> I was like, man, that's a good shot, though, because I was going to go for that, too. <laughs> uh, although, sadly, the first app they had in there was Audible. And I'm like, yeah, so no Audible. Uh, need my <laughs> password first. Then maybe Audible. Yes. Then maybe Audible. Yes, yes. Uh, but spending a little bit of time with it that I have, two things I have noticed that I did not notice last year. So either they've made some changes to the way the defaults are set up or it's just something they added in a in an update. But the keyboard now always shows the number row across the top, which is nice. You're going to tell me that was there last year too, huh? No, I'm going to say, really? It does? Wait, yours doesn't do that? I I know that you can go into the features menu uh, when you're on your Google keyboard, and then you can go to settings and enable the feature, but mine if, does not. I wonder if they push stuff down for my backup, though. That could be. Okay, that might be what it is. But yeah, I like that number row across the top because it saves me a lot of time. Uh, I wish yes, Apple would yes. add that to their freaking keyboard to give me an option to turn it on. Like it's, it drives me nuts, man. I got to switch over here just to type a goddamn comma or something. Like I don't, I don't. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. The keyboard. There's a bug. 
uh, and I forgot about it, but there is a bug and I need to report it to the talkback people. If you are typing, and I notice it with my pin code because my pin code has a couple of double numbers. It is all numbers. Uh huh. I know you, what you're going to say. Go yeah, ahead. Well, you tap. So let's say you got two sevens. So you hit the seven the first time. It's like seven. You know, it puts in the seven. And then you put your finger right back on the seven right there again because you haven't moved. It, it puts will two not sevens. Read, no, it will not read that letter. Like I have to actually physically move off of it and move back before, because I want to verify that it is actually a seven before I lift my finger up the second time. Ah, okay. That So here's the issue that I've had with pin code. So let's say you have two fives in it, for example, and you're typing five, five, or you're typing six, five, five, eight. That is not my pin, but let's say that's what you're trying to type or it my phone number, five, pin. five, six, eight. Yeah, five, five, go. six, eight. When you're trying to type in my number, uh, I can write in four, three, and it's actually three fives now to think about it because I'm actually thinking. So I write in four, three, five, just fine. Now, if I try to put my finger back down and I tap five right away, because obviously I, well, not obviously, but to in my mind, I know where the five is because I just mm-hmm. moved my finger. Mm-hmm. If I put a five in right away, it'll put four, three, five, 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 which is okay because that's what I wanted, but uh, it should just be four, three, five, five. Does that make sense? So it puts an extra yeah. number in there yeah, like it, you put doubling. your finger down twice. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. So I'm experiencing this similar because, like you said, you, you you lift your finger up for the digit to get put in and then you put it right back down where it was. And nine times out of 10, you're going to be right back on that. The thing that doesn't happen for me is that it does not read it like I have to physically move to a different number and then come mm-hmm. back uh, so I can make sure that I'm actually about to put in, you know, a seven or four, whatever the double number is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's very strange. Uh, it is very, very strange. Uh, and is. I noticed it last year, and I think I wrote it off last year as to me being on the beta of mm-hmm. uh, Android. Android 10. Yeah. And so, but yeah, it's still there. So that, that's yeah. the thing. So this phone is going to fuck me up. Like, either I'm going to end up switching to it, which probably ain't going to happen full time, <laughs> uh, or I'm going to go buy another iPhone because it does two things that my phone does not do. Uh, number one, of course, uh, face ID or face yeah. unlock, uh, on Android. Cause I still have a iPhone eight with touch ID. So yeah, that's cool. I like that. It's okay. I could, I could deal Super with Super easy to set up. Yeah. I could. Oh, that shit was hella, man. Look, that happened so quick. I'm like, man, when Tia was setting up her phone, like she had to tilt her head this way, do your head this way, do it. Like it yeah. was a, it was a time consuming process. Like I did this. So like I had set aside time, like, oh, okay, I know I got to go through and set this up. Uh, <laughs> that was the shorter, shortest part of the setup process was, I mean, shit, it took me longer to think of a pen I wanted to use than it did to actually <laughs> set up face, uh, uh, face unlock. Like, yeah, that shit was crazy. The thing that's gonna, that, that's, that's really gonna screw with me, and it happens to me now sometimes when I spend too much time using my watch and then I go back to my phone, uh, is to tap on the screen to wake it up. Cause the eight doesn't do that. Uh, Apple didn't introduce that until they got to 10. Uh, uh, and oh. it's screw- I will do it to like, if, like I said, if I spend too much time, like if I haven't used my phone a lot that day, but I've been using my watch a lot or something like that, I will pick up my, I will flip, you know, have my phone on the table or something. I will tap the screen and I'm like, what's going on with my phone? Why? It was like, oh, yeah. Right. Why is it, why is it not working? That shit though. Yeah. That, that's that's yeah. not a feature of this phone. Like, <laughs> God damn it. But I mean, so far, like, I, I like the phone. I am actually, I don't, I can't remember last year if I picked the big ass phone or if I just ended up getting the big ass phone. Uh, mm-hmm. It's highly likely that I just ended up getting the big ass phone. I do like the size of this one a little bit, but I can't believe these suckers ain't putting no earbuds in this fucking box, man. Right? <laughs> Shit, it took me a minute to get back to it. That's the thing. I well, That's the only thing I want to talk about all day, man. How the hell we ain't get no earbuds, Mike? What the hell is going any, on? Any kind of earbuds. Even wired earbuds would have been nice. That's what now- I was expecting. Mallory's 3A did not have earbuds at all. And then when I got this phone, I, I just quit Google. I'm like, what comes in the box of a Pixel 4? And someone said, no earbuds. I'm like, what? That, that doesn't make any sense. It never occurred to me that I would open this box, take this phone out of the top, pull the little thing out, you know, and start pulling cables and stuff and not see a pair of wired earbuds. I liked those earbuds too. Like I they were, did they like were pretty those. decent ones. I did like I had started using like the funny thing is about it, I don't think I told you this, Mike, but I had actually started using those with the Mac with the Mac. I went on right. Amazon and bought a USB C female to 
USB A male adapter, so I could plug those earbuds in. <laughs> and while I was, you know, not at the desk with my laptop, so sitting in the living room or sitting in the kitchen or whatever like that, like I was using those earbuds everywhere. Everywhere, uh, it was yeah. sort of kind of pissing me off a little bit that I couldn't figure out how to plug them into the iPhone. I was like, man, <laughs> I really like those earbuds. I thought I was going to yeah. get another pair. There's no goddamn earbuds in the case. I got to go yeah. buy some USB C earbuds. You know what? They're probably going to be shitty. And and it, I, you might be able to buy the Pixel Three earbuds. You might be able to find those somewhere. But I am They're a commodity, Mike. Somebody selling them on eBay right now for seventy three right? ninety nine. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Some shit. <laughs> I am waiting because Google said spring, so I might end up just picking. I've never had a pair of true wireless earbuds, so the Pixel Buds might be my first uh, entry into that. I don't like the price point that that it's portrayed to be at, but. If I'm going to buy any buds, it'll probably be those ones. Although the Samsung buds look very intriguing too. Yeah. But no cancellation, I think. I think that was what prevent, like no active noise cancellation. And if I don't want to hear the kids, I don't want to hear the kids. I mean, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What what are the Pixel buds going for? Are they, are they at a buck fifty like the original AirPods? Uh, so the. Initial version of the Pixel Buds is at 179. Ah, okay, so a little bit more expensive than the original or the, the regular AirPods. Uh, mm-hmm. But then again, I still think that Google's work over Wi-Fi though. Like I think there's some oh, Wi-Fi that's, integration. There. That's actually going to be what the new price is for the new Buds. You can join the wait list. Ah. I'm going to join the wait list real quick. Not saying I'm going to buy them, but there you go. You've sure joined the product wait list. We'll send you an email at michael at your own pay.com when it's available. So, do you ever sign up for stuff like that sometimes, hoping, like, oh, well, I'm on this list? Like, maybe they'll give us a special discount when they first tell us. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep, I sure do. And, or I sometimes I'll sign up for it and be like, yeah, man, I can't afford that right now, but maybe, maybe the stars will align and I'll be able to afford it when it actually comes out. <laughs> Yeah, that, I do that sometimes too. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't pay that price right there, but maybe, maybe something will work out and I'm ready to do it. Or maybe they'll be like, since you signed up early, we're going to give you 25%. I'm like, yeah, all right. That shit still ain't happening yet. So, funny thing about that is, is I signed up for the Amazon Echo Car uh, thing. I, I, that's not the name of it, but I think you've heard of it uh, if you've paid attention to tech. But you plug it into your car and it gives you the A lady in your car. And I signed up for that and they gave first comers a slight discount on it, which was cool. But then I went and looked and the Prius is not supported. <laughs> well, ain't that a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How much was the discount though? Like, was it. Was it, it was. I think was they it? were like 49 and they offered them for 29. Mm, nah. So, $20 discount. Yeah, I was going. I, I was wondering if it was a steep enough of a discount that you could just have bought it and then just flipped it to somebody else that probably wanted one. Uh, yeah, I probably could have, but yeah, yeah, but not really, not not really at that price point. You wouldn't really make make enough money back off of it because it's all right. Amazon's right. going to do some goofy ass deal where you know Prime Day you can get it for it's called Prime Day. <laughs> yeah, you can get it for fourteen ninety nine. Or yep, if you buy yep. if you buy a Echo Show, you get this and this free, like the Amazon, because it's their money, right? Like they really don't give a shit. Like they, they I ain't gonna right. say they don't care. They're getting more people into their ecosystem right. to buy more like, shit. You know, like they may that may actually be a, a, a promotion going on right now for people who ain't crazy like me and been paying for Prime for the past seven years. It's like, oh, new Prime customers get a free Echo car or Echo. Yeah, Dot. yeah. It's like, yeah. Really? Why I don't get something for being a customer for like seven years? Where are my shit, man? I agree. I think our prime renews at the end of this month. So you have anything else? We're sitting at about an hour after we do edits. No, I, mean, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, yarnpay.com forward slash DM44 for show notes and more information about items we mentioned. I'm on Twitter at Payon, P A Y O W N, and he's not on Twitter. But you can still tweet at D-A-M-A-S-A-T. You've been listening to Your Own Pay Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, visit yourownpay.com slash cast for exclusive content. And to contact us today. We're eager to hear your thoughts and about how you're making this podcast your own. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. The Your Own Pay Podcast. Yourownpay.com.